Hello AI enthusiasts, welcome back to Skill Curve. Tired of endless Google searches and cryptic stack overflow threads? Introducing your new coding sidekick, Amazon Q. In this particular video, I'll be showing you how to set up Amazon Q inside of VS Code and then we are going to test it on like 5 use cases and we will see whether it performs well or not, okay? So without further ado, let's get started. Alright guys, first of all you need to open up your VS Code. So you can see right over here I am inside of my VS Code. In the VS Code you have to navigate to like the extensions tab. And into the extensions tab what you need to do you need to search for AWS. Okay, open up this one AWS Toolkit which includes like Amazon Q as well now. Okay. It has like Amazon Q, Code Whisperer, and there are a lot of AWS services that you can use with this toolkit. So just simply click on this blue install button and it will be done for you in a while. Okay. It's just like having chat GPT inside of your VS code. And that's really a cool thing. We will be testing this thing out. It's done. You can see right over here. Now, what you need to do, you just simply need to scroll down here, click on this blue button, which says like AWS Builder ID. Okay, proceed to browser and you need to just click on like open browser. Okay, so it will open up a browser for you. You just need to confirm that this code matches this one. Okay, it does. So I'll click on confirm and continue. Now, we need to create like AWS Builder IDs and uh, that's absolutely free and you can test like many of the AWS services with AWS Builder account. So, I would highly recommend you to just sign up. It's a fairly easy process. Yeah, I'll simply provide in with my email address here. Click on next. It will take me to a new page where what I need to do, I simply need to enter in my name. Then click on next. Then they have sent me a verification code. I'll simply grab this code, copy it and paste it in right here. Okay, click on verify. You need to actually choose in your password. Okay. Yeah, all right. It matches. It's correct. And I'll simply click on like create AWS builder ID. Okay. Now you just simply need to give the access. Okay, I'll say allow AWS toolkit for VS code to access your data. Click on allow. Yeah, I think it would be the last step. It says like AWS Toolkit for VS Code can now access your data. You can simply close this window and start using AWS Toolkit for VS Code. So here it is. You can see right over here. Okay. This is the chat. You can see this is AWS and this is Amazon Q uh, right inside of your VS Code. Okay. Let's start to give it a test prompt and see how it performs. I give it a prompt like write a Python program that provides six digit random number. And I think it has done fairly quick and a really great job. What I can do, I can simply create a new file. Okay, this is what it does like a Python file. And now what I can do simply, I can just click on this cursor and click on like insert add cursor. Then all of my code suddenly comes and populates. It. That's a really cool feature that Amazon Q provides you. Now you can see the suggested follow up questions. Okay. How does random dot random work? What is F string formatting? Can you explain more about Amazon Bedrock? So these are some follow up questions that you can use. Okay. I think the tool is looking very promising, very great. Let's get into its thorough testing and see whether this tool is actually capable of what it's claiming or not. Okay. All right. So the first use case is I want to check whether it has like information about its own services or not. Okay. So I'll simply give it a prompt like I'm saying generate code to create an S3 bucket with versioning enabled and a lifecycle policy to delete objects after 30 days. Okay. Let's see how it performs in this scenario. Okay. Yeah, it provided me with the Python code to create an S3 bucket. I am literally impressed by its creation speed. Enable and a lifecycle policy to delete objects after 30 days. Okay, let me just insert this code here. Uh, okay, it imported Boto3, then dot .client, bucket name. This should come from your AWS uh, console. Okay, S3 dot bucket create. Then it's enabling the versioning. Perfect. Then it's setting the lifecycle policy to delete objects after 30 days. 
Well, yeah, seems like perfect, okay? It's looking really great and awesome. So that's a definitely pass, okay? And now you can see the follow-up questions here as well, like how do I get the bucket name? So if you are confused about something, okay? So you can like read more about this thing here as well. Now I have to check it for like code completion, like how much it is efficient in like providing me the codes, okay? So I can say like write a snake game in Python. Okay, I usually test a lot of like coding LLMs with this thing because I believe that this is actually a fairly good project to test a model's ability. Okay, because you have to provide like uh, a lot of things. I can say like using Pygame, the library in Python. Let's see. Okay, because Pygame provides graphical user interfaces. Yeah, the speed is awesome. I don't know what it's using at the back end. The speed is great. Let me just add it at cursor. You can see that it's fairly simple, okay? Let me just simply save the file and run this. I will save the file as like snake.py, python snake.py, okay? I don't know why window is just opening and closing. We can say here, okay? The window just pops up and closes. What's the issue, I want to check whether it actually coordinates with the previous responses as well or not. All right, it said like, uh, yeah, it gave me like suggestions. Yeah, it gave me another version after like series of different uh, like prompting. So I'll just simply run it once again to see. Yeah, it's actually looking good. The score is there. It's working as it should actually, okay? It's working as it's expected. So yeah, that's a definite pass, okay? All right, so the next use case is that I want to see whether it resolves the bugs or not, okay? So to test this out, the coolest thing is that it can read your complete file efficiently, okay? So I'll say like, tell me what are bugs in this code, remove them and provide complete code, okay? So you can see that it says like the ATM parameter pass to make transactions is not defined. Uh, like it won't know which ATM machine to interact with, okay? No error handling is included for invalid transaction types and there's no validation. So it's providing me with like a new function. So what I can do, I can simply uh, choose this class, okay? I can just get rid of this thing and I can insert this new code here. So yeah, it actually uh, removes the bugs quite efficiently. Uh, it can take in account with like the whole code as well. So that's really an important feature, which like Amazon Q is providing. The next thing what I need to do, I need to check whether it can serve as like code comprehension companion or not, okay? So I can say like explain what this code does and how it actually works, okay? So let's see whether it can break down the code's logic or not. Yeah, it's doing this gracefully. You can see right over here, it says like uh, it imports the random module to generate random transaction types and amounts. Then a bank account class is defined to represent a customer's account initiated with name and starting balance. An ATM class is also defined to interface with accounts. Then a customer class is defined. Then it says like it creates a sample data. And then a list of possible transaction types is defined. It then uh, loops 10 items, okay, you can see right over here, uh, randomly selects a transaction type and amount tries to call the customer's make transaction method. So yeah, it can be a good code companion as well. So yeah, that's a definite pass as well, okay. The next and last use case I want to try here is that whether it can provide you with the optimized versions of the code or not. So here is the simple Fibonacci series function. So I could give it a prompt like, Recommend ways to optimize this code for better performance, okay? I don't know why it's saying like I cannot answer this question, okay? Yeah, I think I haven't selected this thing, okay? You need to select the code. It says like memorization, store previously calculated values in a dictionary, then use a closed form solution instead of recursion, then vectorization, then parallelization and generator function, okay? Yield values lazily rather than building a full list. Hmm, that's great. 
dynamic programming uh, let me ask like provide to me with an optimized version of this hood yeah it has provided me with an optimized version you can see right over here yeah this code seems like really good let me just insert that cursor okay let me just run it to see whether it's working or not yeah it's working gracefully you can see right over here so that's really a great thing and it's definitely a pass okay so that marks the end of all this video thank you so much for watching and i shall catch you up in some other one till then have a good day bye